At square 12, you take a closer look at your data table. You have three columns of numbers, but what do these numbers mean? Letters and numbers are symbols, and they can be used in several ways. The letter A can be a grade in a class, or it can represent a whole word in an acrostic, as in ATM for automatic teller machine. Or it can be used to indicate one item, as in I want a banana and two apples. Just as we use letters in different ways, we have several options with numbers. The ID column in our data table uses numbers as names. If you have ID number 52, you are not better or worse than the person with 23. It is just an identifier. This usage, called a nominal level of measurement, uses numbers as names. It is called a nominal measurement because there is no mathematical value to the numbers. They are simply noms, names. It wouldn't make sense to add up the ID numbers or to take their average. It would be just as silly as asking the average of the names Judy, Jorge, and Amy. When you see a number on the side of a horse, race car, or runner, the numbers are being used as names. It's great for distinguishing between individuals, but it's not appropriate for statistical manipulation. So you can relax. We're not going to do anything with the ID numbers. We would, but there's nothing that can be done with them. In the IQ column, the numbers represent how many test items the person passed. We have more opportunity for number crunching here. These are not just identifiers. The numbers have some math value. Not counting nominal, using numbers as names, there are three types of math numbers, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Each has its limits. Ordinal scales use numbers to indicate relative strength or value. They are comparisons to another score in the scale. For example, lining up by height is ordinal. In a short group of people, there would still be a first place, but is first only for that group. Winning first place in a race or contest is ordinal. You could tell who did best, but not by how much. In the Olympics, the difference between first and second can be by milliseconds. But if I ran against a professional athlete, the difference between first place and my second place would be dramatic. But I'd still be in second place, well, as long as no one else was running in the race. It's like looking at a series of mountains in the distance. You can see which one you have to cross first, but you can't tell the distance between them. Ordinal numbers put things in order, but that's all they do. Consequently, you can't do much mathematical manipulation of ordinal numbers. Ratio numbers let you do ratios. When you say something is 3 times faster or 44 times heavier, you're using a ratio. Ratio numbers are what you think of as numbers. We can do math with them. We can add them, square them, use them in formulas. Ratio numbers have an absolute zero. You need an absolute zero to treat numbers as numbers. And there really are only four ratio scales counting, four fish or three cars, distance, including height and length, time, as in the number of seconds or hours a task takes, and weight. A 5 kilo box is half as heavy as a 10 kilo box because zero means no weight. On an interval scale, numbers are almost like real numbers. You can do most mathematical manipulations with them, but you can't make ratio statements. Interval scales are things like temperature, IQ, and history exams. There's an equal distance between the numbers, but the starting point isn't well set. Your stove uses a Fahrenheit or Celsius interval, but neither has an absolute zero. Fahrenheit zero is cold water with ice just forming. Zero for Celsius, also called centigrade, is the freezing point of water. Only the less known Kelvin and Rankin scales have a zero which means total lack of temperature. On an interval scale, you can say today is 80 degrees, and it's a lot warmer than when it was 40 degrees last winter. If you had an absolute zero, you could say that today is twice as hot as it was last winter. With the ratio scale and its absolute zero, you could bake cookies in half the time if you doubled the temperature. But on Celsius and Fahrenheit stoves, they just get burnt. It's all in how you use the numbers. On a history test, you can say you got twice as many correct, but you can't say you know twice as much. If you are proposing that your test is of an underlying variable, but you don't have an absolute zero, you must limit your interpretation to being higher or lower by degree, not by ratio. If you score zero on a history test, it doesn't mean you don't know anything about history. History tests are often samples of the course material. They're not comprehensive tests of ability. So scoring zero on a history test doesn't mean that you have absolutely no knowledge of the subject. It just means that you didn't know this material. 
our IQ column, is a good example of an interval scale. If you didn't answer any of the questions correctly, it wouldn't mean that you had no intelligence. It just means you didn't answer those questions right. If you have an IQ of 100, it doesn't mean that you are twice as smart as my little brother who is profoundly retarded. You are much, much smarter than he was. He couldn't walk or talk or do any of the things you could easily do. Similarly, you can't say that being a genius with an IQ of 145 is 1 1.5 times smarter than an IQ of 96. There isn't that much difference between the two. Our ID number is at an ordinal level. IQ is at an interval level. What about handedness? Handedness was coded with ones and zeros. So zero doesn't mean lack of handedness. That rules out a ratio scale. In fact, the numbers are only indicators of category, left and right. So handedness is like ID numbers. It's a nominal variable. The only variable we could do math on is IQ. And since it is not a ratio variable, we can't do all the math manipulations we want. We have to be careful because IQs are only sort of quasi-numbers. Do you remember the operational definitions? What we did back in square five shows up here. If we had operationally defined intelligence as wearing a name tag with a randomly assigned number on it, IQ would be at a nominal level. If we had rated people as high, medium, or low levels of intelligence, we would be using an ordinal scale. If we defined intelligence as how fast you can solve a puzzle, our numbers would be on a ratio scale. But we chose to give people a test which samples their vocabulary, their general knowledge, their eye-hand coordination, and several other areas. With this test as our operational definition of intelligence, zero doesn't mean total lack of intelligence. So we are using interval numbers. Next, we get to draw pretty pictures.